Governor, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yesterday, our big headline was an unfortunate one. The CDC reporting that Rhode Island is reporting more cases per capita than any other state in the country during the last week. When you see that headline, Governor, do you think, you know what, maybe I should have implemented more restrictions sooner? Uh, I don't really. Uh, I think, obviously, it's very concerning. The hospitalizations are even more concerning. Uh, but, you know, we are, our test positive rate is almost 10%. That's very high. It's too high. So what I think is, what can I do to get people to follow the rules? Um, I think that the reason I said I don't is because there's a lot of fatigue. You know, at this point, I can do, I can say whatever I want, but if people don't follow the rules, it isn't going to help. So what I mostly think is, please, Rhode Island, hang in there, follow the rules. We're in a very dangerous spot right now, and if you could just rein it in and follow the rules, over the next few weeks, it would save lives and make a difference. When it comes to those rules, sort of the opposite side of the coin, do you think maybe these restrictions that we've implemented aren't the right ones? Maybe I need to look mm -hmm. at uh, other regulations or, or target different industries? Yes, so that is something we're constantly thinking about. I am constantly asking the team and challenging myself, what could I do differently? How could we do better? Because the results need to be better. So, for example, one thing we are doing, which is different, is we are really ramping up our testing, and then we are very quickly telling the positive that they're positive, and quickly getting them into isolation. So we're using a lot more technology, so you don't have to wait for a phone call, you're going to get a text message, you can schedule your own test for yourself. So those are the new approaches, exactly to your point. We cannot just keep doing the same thing. So we're trying new techniques really to get more people tested, quickly identified as positive, and quickly into isolation. When it comes to the pause, I assume you'll be announcing Thursday whether it will be extended. Is that the plan? Uh, I think so, yes. Okay. I don't, as I sit here with you today on Tuesday, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Mobility is down. Okay. That is a good thing. Uh, suggesting that it is working, so I, but I need a little more time to figure out um, exactly the plan. But, the, but right now the plan is to make an announcement Thursday. And so it, with mobility down, should we read into that? Are you leaning towards not extending the pause? Are you leaning towards maybe extending it? Uh, it is working, I think, early data suggests, so that's a good thing. Um, and, our, and our cases are, as you just said, we're not in a good place. So while I haven't decided, it would be, a ch it'd be hard to, to not keep us in some sort of a pause, it just in light of the data. And if you do extend the pause, will the extra unemployment benefits and more money for impacted businesses be extended as well? I hope so. So, you know, thankfully I reserved, I didn't spend all of the COVID money. Uh, thank goodness, because now we have some money to put out to businesses. It, the answer is I would like to, but it depends on the nature of the pause, right? So if we just kept the pause exactly as it is, then yes, I would want to extend some more um, assistance to businesses. But as you said in the beginning, maybe it's something different. You know, maybe it's a bit of a different approach. So I do, we have a little bit more money in the stimulus. Businesses are really getting hit hard. And if I have to keep them closed, I would like to couple that with some, some money. As we've talked about in the past, that CARES Act funding uh, vanishes at the end of the year. And we've been hearing from some businesses who've been <clears throat> impacted that they need more help and that there's still money left and they're not getting answers to their grant applications fast enough. Mm. I'm wondering, is there a delay? What's being done to get that money out the door more quickly? Because folks are, are really feeling it. Yeah, I know people are really feeling it. Uh, I have no doubt that they need more help. It's been a brutal year, and I hope Congress can get something done between now and next, next week. We have a little bit more stimulus left, very little actually, and I, as I just said, I would like to put that out to businesses. I'm hopeful that Congress is gonna step up, do its job, and put money out for, by the way, it's not just small businesses, to, to renters. You know, I worry so much about how are people gonna pay the rent through the winter, evictions. I know that small business relief is on the table. Eviction relief or rental assistance is on the table. 
So I think um, I'm hopeful Congress will do that. With our programs, this round of stimulus is going out incredibly quickly. The unemployment insurance, the extra $200, landed yesterday right on time. The money being put out of revenue is getting out quickly. I'm sure we can do better. I try harder every day to do better, but I'm not hearing a groundswell of complaints. The money is getting out the door. Speaking about Congress, um, like you said, they're considering a, a new stimulus package, but so much of what is currently in place expires very soon. Yes. Uh, PUA expires the day after Christmas. The DLT tells me about 35,000 Rhode Islanders will lose their benefits if that yeah. expires. You mentioned rental assistance. The eviction moratorium federally expires at the end of the year. Can the state do anything to help those folks who would be impacted by those changes if Congress doesn't take action? It is hard to say. Again, we don't have much stimulus left. And what I am spending my time doing, and I began my day today with um, talking to Senator Reid, I talked to Republican governors around the country to ask them to lobby their members of Congress. Congress needs to step up. This isn't a Rhode Island problem. You know, this is a nationwide crisis of unemployment. The United States government needs to step up. What about an eviction moratorium? That wouldn't cost any money. Would you sign yeah, something I, like that? So I would like to see the legislature do that. In fact, I'm asking them. We're in discussions about the possibility of them doing that. I don't have the power to do that as the governor, hmm. but it, I, would, I would strongly urge them to consider doing that when they come in to do the budget in the next week or two. I want to ask about field hospitals. Uh, governor Charlie Baker announced, I believe just yesterday, he wants hospitals to curtail elective procedures. We've talked about this before. You said you didn't want to do it. Is it something you're considering now? Yeah, not really. Okay. Um, I want, I'm going to leave it up to the hospitals to manage. You know, we're very lucky. We have a tight knit community here. So the two, Lifespan and Care New England are managing the two field hospitals. They may decide they have to cut back on elective surgeries. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it came to that, but I'm going to let them manage it. Um, unless things really get out of control, which I don't foresee. We've been hearing some reports that the field hospitals are looking to hire some nursing home staff and that they might be given some sort of financial incentive to do that. Do you worry about the potential impact on nursing homes? If it Absolutely. Comes to that? The single biggest worry right now in, in hospitals isn't the beds, it's the staffing. You know, we have 900 beds in the field hospitals and they're, they're high quality beds. We don't have the staff which is why I keep begging and pleading with Rhode Islanders. I was in CVS the other day doing my own personal shopping, and I ran into a woman who said, Governor, please like, try harder, because I have, I've been asked to put off my surgery, which I need, because the hospitals are full. What she said was, why did those kids have to party over Halloween? Now I can't get my surgery. Like, come on, Rhode Island. Have, choosing to break the rules and have the parties is it really is costing people's lives. Speaking of parties, we're in a very festive stateroom <laughs> right now. Uh, a lot of folks are thinking about Christmas. Yeah. Is it going to be similar guidance for Christmas that we got for Thanksgiving? Plan to celebrate it with just your household? I don't know. You know, it's my hope that I can get a handle on it and reduce our test positivity. If our test positivity in a week or two from now, a week from now is still 10%, yes. We'll, you know, we'll have no choice. But let's take it a day at a time. Let's pay attention to the pause. If you want to celebrate Christmas with your family, lock it down now. Your name was in the national spotlight yet again yesterday as the Biden team announced their pick for HHS secretary, which, as you said last week, was not you. But Politico was reporting it was supposed to be you. Uh, the outlet said at one point last week, plans were in place for Biden to announce Raimondo as his HHS nominee. The president-elect never directly offered the position to Raimondo, but people close to him indicated the job was yours if you wanted it. I'm wondering, Governor, what changed between Wednesday night and Thursday afternoon when you told the public it's not going to be me? Uh, nothing changed. I mean, that, what you just read, sounds like a lot of rumors to me. And you and I have talked about this a half a dozen times. I have nothing more to say about it. I'm here and I'm working hard. Some people noticed that you said I will not be his HHS pick, which potentially leaves the door open to other cabinet positions. Can you say here today that you will not be joining the Biden administration? What I will say here today is that I have nothing more to say about this topic and I am uh, working 24-7 for Rhode Island. 
I want to ask about the judiciary picks. Um, your office noted a series of firsts with these. First person of color to the Rhode Island Supreme Court, first Asian American to the Rhode Island Superior Court, first Latina to the Rhode Island Family Court, and first majority female Supreme Court in Rhode Island history. Clearly, this was important to you. Yes, these are historic, this is history in the making. It is so exciting. Uh, first time ever majority woman, Rhode Island Supreme Court, as you just said, first ever Asian American, first Latina, and these are amazing women. You know, I didn't pick them because of their ethnicity. I picked them because they're fantastic and talented and also women and younger. It's a generational change on the bench. It's an equity, bold statement. And for me, you know, I have seen the impact on girls seeing their state's first governor. It's very empowering. So to the Latinx kids out there and the girls out there and the Asian Rhode Islanders out there, they will see their faces represented in the judiciary and know that they can be that. And to the litigants that go before these judges, they might see somebody in a robe who looks like them. So I, I have the chills just talking about it. It's a, it's a moment of change for Rhode Island and I think it's great. With all due respect to Senator Lynch Prada, there are some people out there who are questioning whether her nomination violates at least the spirit of the revolving door law, but you don't see it that way. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the Ethics Commission ruled on that, um, and I agree with their ruling. I think that's baseless. Look, I think it's really important to have diversity on the bench. Some of the best United States um, Supreme Court justices had been legislators in their, you know, back home. And so uh, you, don't want, you don't want all academics or all um, trial lawyers or all policymakers. You know, in this case, I've had the opportunity to work personally with her. I've seen her make law in this building. She's extremely thoughtful and she'll take that experience with her to the bench. Governor, I believe we're at the end of our time. Anything else you'd like to add? No, ha ha happy holidays. I mean, I know it's not a happy time, but let's all try to find some happiness. Governor, thank you.